Hi, Pastor Steve here. I want to thank you for listening today, and I want to encourage you because I know that God will truly bless you as you study His Word. So hey, let's get started. Hey, church family. I'm glad to see you're sticking with these devotions. During this time of social distancing, I want to continue to encourage you to draw close to God. Allow Him to be your strength and your comfort. Today we are going to be looking at Psalm 72. So if you would, open your Bibles to Psalm 72 and we'll begin here in just a moment. In an election year, expectations for future leadership are high. We desire that a president or a governor or another elected official, we desire them to accomplish certain objectives. We also hope that our leaders act justly and with integrity. Yet when a term limit is complete, who among us isn't disappointed by the unfulfilled promises or the integrity of the leader? In the Old Testament, a line of kings ruled Israel for nearly five centuries. There was anticipation and excitement for the reign of King Saul, but he proved to be a national disaster. King David, his successor, was judged righteously by Scripture, yet even he made some pretty major mistakes. But then the stage was set for his son, King Solomon, to embody and accomplish God's mission for a king. Psalm 72 is a royal psalm that is a prayer for the new king. Some theologians believe that it was a prayer of Solomon in hope that he would reign well and that he would be a good king. Others believe it was a prayer of David for his son to reign well. I mean, either way, the psalm contains a very idealistic tone to it. And ultimately, just like King Saul and just like King David, Solomon starts off his reign pretty well. But ultimately, he falls very short of the goal that was set within the psalms. Join me as we read Psalm 72, this royal psalm, this psalm that has a very idealistic tone to it. Psalm 72, starting in verse 1. Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. He will judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. The mountains will bring prosperity to the people, the hills the fruit of righteousness. He will defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. He will crush the oppressor. Verse 5, he will endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon, through all generations. He will be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days, the righteous will flourish. Prosperity will abound till the moon is no more. Verse 8. He will rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The desert tribes will bow before him and his enemies will lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of distant shores will bring, drip, will bring tribute to him. The kings of Sheba and Seba will bring him gifts. All kings will bow down to him and all nations will serve him. Verse 12, for he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence, for precious is their blood in his sight. Verse 15, long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given him. May people ever pray for him and bless him all the day long. Let grain abound throughout the land. On the tops of the hills may it sway. Let its fruit flourish like Lebanon. It, let it thrive like the grass of the field. May his name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun. All nations will be blessed through him, and they will call him blessed. Verse 18, praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does marvelous deeds. Praise to be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. This concludes the prayers of David, son of Jesse. This really is an idealistic king. I mean, think about it for a second. A king that will judge the people righteously. A king that will save the children of the needy, one that will crush the oppressor, defend the afflicted, a king that every other king will bow down to, one that all nations will serve, one that will deliver the needy and take pity on the weak, rescue them from the oppressed. 
one who all nations will be blessed through. I mean, does this sound like a king we may know? Well, I hope so. Psalm 72 is another one of those messianic psalms. It speaks of the future king who will do all of these things. And we know him to be King Jesus. So there are three things that I would like for you to do today. First, I would encourage you to go back and read through Psalm 72 again and notice all of the references that are made to things that Jesus is known for, things that he stood for, things that he did, his moral compass. Second, I want you to find yourself in this story. Let us realize that we serve the best king. Let us take hope in the fact that Jesus does all of these things, has done all of these things, and that he cares for us deeply and he loves us so much. And yet we can still call him King Jesus. And third, the Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that we are to be ambassadors for Christ. In other words, we are to be ambassadors for King Jesus. So what does an ambassador do? Well, an ambassador is a representative of the king. So I want you to ask yourself today, how are you representing King Jesus today? Can people look at you and know that you are an ambassador for the greatest king the world has ever known and the world will ever know? I want you to ask yourself that question and then maybe go to God in prayer and ask him to help you be the ambassador that he wants you to be. Have a great day, friends, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks again for listening today. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more information about our church or if you just want to share what God's been doing in your life, drop us a line. Give us a call. Again, may God bless you.